So this is a metal scrap scrap yard that went up in flames, according to the, some of the employees over here, uh, told me that they think it was possible that it may be a battery caught on fire because uh, lithium batteries, if you just if you just cut them or stab them, they will uh, catch fire. And you can, if we go over here, yeah, I'm in, of course I'm in the shooting into the sun, so it's going to be hard to see. Of course, there's huge uh, piles of metal over here, and apparently one of these huge piles of metal caught fire. And so I was like, how did how did a pile of steel catch fire? Well, apparently, all the other stuff that is in the pile, there's some firefighters right there. Yeah, so apparently all the other stuff that was in the metal, like plastics and anything that was burnable, like refrigerator stuff and trash that was in the pile, caught fire. So I guess it went up pretty quick. So you can see, you head over this way. How's it going, guys? You can see some firefighters right here. It's kind of, kind of warm out today. I can imagine they're probably sweating themselves to death over here. You can see there's a crane. Uh, what, do you, what would you call that? A uh, extendable crane hose? A hose crane? They're just showering all the uh, all the metals down. Yeah, like like I said, uh, when I first saw this, it says turn sc scrap into cash, aluminum, brass, copper, radiator, stainless steel. It's like what what was on fire? So there must have been other things that were in the pile of stuff that caught fire. So this the smoke cloud was huge, and I was about a uh, five miles away down this direction and uh, I could see the black smoke so I knew something was uh, something big was on fire so apparently the steel doesn't burn but whatever is attached to the steel any of the trash caught fire and they blocked off this road so I actually had to finagle my my way around this wooded area and walk down through the trees over here to get down here because it's kind of a dead end and the, the police have basically cardened off any of the car traffic. But they got quite a few units. I can't really walk down there, I don't think, because they'll tell me to get the heck out of here. But like I said, the sun's shining right in my face. Let's see if we can get in a shade a little bit here. Get the sun out of there. You can see there's probably, I don't know, eight or ten fire units down there. I, so the, a little while ago, can you see a little bit better, a little bit better there? With the, Pose. They're still showering this place off. 2050 51st Street, yeah. So I actually ended up driving way around the wrong way because, like I said, it's a dead end. So I was trying to drive this way and hit a dead end, so I had to drive way around. So a little bit earlier, it was a little bit more exciting, and uh, the smoke was a lot heavier, but I think they're just doing some... They're kind of just doing some... Uh, safety work because I don't think you can see the smoke. There's a lot of clouds out. Let's see what you're seeing here. Yeah, there's a lot of clouds out here, but a little, but before it was the black smoke and there's still some residual smoke blowing this way. But the employees were out here talking and I asked one guy about it and he said, uh, we're not sure what it was, but it's happened before where we had small fires and we just put them out ourselves. You can see a little bit of white smoke over here in this direction. Yeah, I'm in the worst possible if we could get, if I could get a cloud just for like 20 seconds, so you could see better, but the sun's, of course, cell phones are not made to shoot in the sun very much because they don't have a, a hood. We could probably see some white smoke over here. Still a lot of white smoke over there, so you can see there's piles and piles of steel right here, and apparently that's kind of what happened was you can, and then the smoke's all drifting over this way but a lot of the employees I was joking with the guy I was like are you gonna get the rest of the day off he's like well hopefully if they pay me because all the employees are kind of sitting out here I don't know if we walk down this way if we can see anything else but it's very stinky like plastic it smells like plastic and smoke smoke <laughs> smoky plastic yeah, you can see a lot more smoke from this angle coming out. A lot of people from the uh, the neighboring uh, businesses are kind of hanging out, checking out. Oh, you can, so you, you can get a good shot here. Like I said, the the uh, sun is backlighting it, so it's very hard to see. The sun would give us a break. You could see, but a lot of white smoke. 
you can kind of see the plume of uh, water coming off there. This is exactly the worst conditions to shoot <laughs> video. You can kind of, I can kind of see. And right, right here is a... Uh, Who's telling me to put the camera down? Who, who's, say, who's saying that? Huh? Who's saying that? Saying it. I'm not on their property. This is the street. Hey, let me hold your phone. I need to call somebody right quick. Just, just FYI, if you're in a public street, right, you can well, film. You can go down there because you're not even supposed to be in front of this gate right here. You're not an employee and you're not selling anything. Sir. So you need to go down this there. This is a public street. Let me hold your phone so I can call somebody right quick. All right, then go down there. I'm just explaining the law. Oh, no, to you. I don't explain it to you, too. Go down there. The police just told us to tell everybody to get out of here. Public street? Public street. Right? That's blocked so, hold on, hold on, hold on. But by law, that video you took it? I'm a professional the photographer. Owner of this company has to be you you have that video. No, you're wrong. Sorry. You're all wrong. I'm a, I'm a press photographer, so I know the rules, okay? Public street, you can film whatever you want. So just FYI, if anybody ever tells you that, that's actually actually wrong. If you're in a public street, you're able to film whatever you need to film. Anyway, I was trying to say. Looks like we have a bit of an angry mob here. By law, I'm allowed to do what I'm doing legally. If you're standing in a public street, you can use Okay, well, if you got enough pictures, you can gonna, just slide on down up here. Right. I'm not trying to have any uh, problems with you guys. But, hey, right? I ain't got no problems it's called, it's called freedom of the press. It's called freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Yeah. I, I, mean, I know, I know the, the law. Press. I know the law real You can stand in front of somebody's house. Stand in front of somebody's house and shoot video out the wall and that But I'm just saying I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I got you, though. You did. You Listen, you got the right, all right, and you and you can videotape me all day long, man. Yeah, videotape just like I videotape you over there. You know what I'm saying? Because you just seen the phone, you just seen I just, my face. I just want you guys to understand. I'm I just seen my face just then, so I don't want you to sit there and videotape me and want to put me on a paper or anything else. No. Well, I have my camera down. Yeah. So for some reason, uh, everybody's just a little upset, I guess, maybe because of the fire and everything. How you doing, man? Do you know me? No, I was just saying hi. Uh, okay. You were looking at me. Oh, yeah. Can I just say hi? Oh, okay. Good? So it's very hostile. Apparently it's very hostile right now. guy's still still yelling at me back here I guess he's telling his boss you don't have permission anyway what I was trying to say earlier is so this this guy was trying to tell me that the police told them to get everybody out of the way but I was trying to explain to them that freedom of the press lets you film things standing in a public street like you've seen uh, and I don't know why I'm I don't know everybody's just sort of has an attitude but Maybe that's understandable because the place they're working is on fire and a lot of motion there and you know maybe they're going to be missing work. So I'm just trying to let it go. I'm just trying to uh, stay out of the area. But uh, it always feels kind of, uh, it's uh, aggravating when people are taking their emotions out on you for taking a picture of something. And the one guy said he didn't want to have his picture taken, so I didn't take a picture of it. So I've never really, there's only few places I've ever been that uh, have had <laughs> that kind of reaction is when people, people pass away. And of course, if you're filming, you know, people that have, have lost somebody or has been a tragedy, I understand that. 
But uh, the other thing I understand also is being a photographer, a press photographer for over 25 years, that there is freedom of the press. And if somebody tells you you can't film, uh, you know, they need to have an understanding of that, I guess. But also, like I said, they were saying, they were also saying that the police doesn't want anybody standing there. Although the company employees are standing there, Public Street, anyway. I didn't want to make this any uglier than it had to be, but you can see how big this place is. It uh, starts at that block where the cop car is down there, and apparently it's this whole giant warehouse building, but I can understand. <laughs> I have the feeling that one of the guys may be, uh, what would you say, a fugitive possibly, or, you know, doesn't want anybody showing it. I'm surprised the press is not here. Maybe the press is on the other side, but anyway. The one guy in the red shirt was eyeballing me. I said, hi, how you doing? He walks up to me, and of course, he's wearing... <laughs> he's still down there, and so is the other guy. I think they're following me. Well, the police aren't going to arrest me for fusing video, so... Uh, I don't know. They keep saying if the press sees that, they're going to they're gonna erase it, which is not true. Anyway, so I guess I'm in for a long walk because I have to walk back around the building. It's been very exciting, very fun, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what else I can say about it. It's unfortunate. I'm sorry for the employees. I'm sorry for the owner of the business that that happened. Unfortunately, fire is just a, uh, I guess, uh, a fact of nature. Just like out in California, they're having a lot of that going on. So I. Uh, I'm gonna go take some, try to take some pictures and head on out. So just a quick addendum. Man, the sun is brutal today. It's this fall sun that's killing me. Uh, just an addendum. I know my rights as a, uh, as a uh, photographer and a press photographer. If you're covering anything that's public news, I mean, you're essentially, you know, an agent of uh, news, which I, I do cover, you know, news events as well as do other kind of feature stuff. But I was down there and firefighters were walking past me and weren't saying anything. And I also talked to another uh, guy, Carlos, from um, the, uh, the paper, Sarasota paper. And he was agreeing with me when I told him the story about how, uh, you know, I'm standing in public street and they can't, uh, you know, they can't say anything. So I'm not trying to have any hard feelings with anybody. I'm just trying to make it perfectly clear. So you've seen all that stuff uh, National Enquirer type of stuff or TMZ where they're shooting well they're in public areas shooting uh, celebrities you know in California and all that and also you know press photographers go out on boats and film people in the water at their private villa well I mean that's that's part of our law is freedom of speech and I'm not sure if it's uh, the freedom of the press if there's a specific amendment I wasn't ready to talk about this I have to, I'm gonna look it up online when I get home but just to let you know, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Here's a little, here's the other side of the fire. See, I'm walking down the railroad tracks now, trying to avoid the angry mob of people. So, I think they're still cleaning up some minor hot spots, as they call them in the business. Hot spots are just little tiny things you can't see, maybe. So, maybe they're bringing in some foam trucks to foam, put some foam on it. I think when you have something that has, uh, you know, hazmat, uh, chemicals, chemically related, you have to foam it down, so they might be, they might be here for a while. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope, you, I hope you guys learned something from this, not to be intimidated by people when they tell you you can't film. Now, if you're in a private street in a neighborhood and it has a sign that says private street, that would be considered illegal, but this is not in any way a private street. It's a private way, so, so as long as we're clear. And I wasn't trying to aggravate people, and I wasn't trying to film people's faces. Uh, I don't think you could even see them because of the fact the sun is so bright and the picture was in such a uh, shadow that you won't be able to notice. But, I, you know, I don't think I have to say anymore. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm walking back to the railroad tracks to uh, retrieve my vehicle. See you later.
Look at this, by coincidence, a train just happens to be coming by. I've been trying, I've been trying for years to catch this train running. And the train's actually running, and I wasn't even expecting it right during the middle of the day. That is so funny. Here's, and here's another weird thing. As I was walking down this way, the railroad tracks, I had this feeling like, what, it wouldn't it be funny if a train come by? So that, that exactly proves my point that I am actually uh, psychic to some degree. 